Windows 7 jump lists are customizable shortcut menus that are associated with applications in the new Windows 7 taskbar. The shortcuts might take you to recent documents or perform certain tasks. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to customize jump lists using C Sharp. I've already got an application ready to go. It's a simple editor for C Sharp code. So first I'm going to run the application. And now I'm going to right click the icon in the taskbar. And you'll notice that I get some built-in options. I can pin the program to the taskbar. I can create a new instance of the application. Uh, I can close the applications, all instances. So you get these for free. I didn't have to do anything to, for those to appear. And they're, they're good, nice shortcuts for general purpose tasks. Okay, this time let's open up a file, a C Sharp file in the editor. And then you'll notice that in the, the jump list, all of a sudden, that file appears in the recent documents. So now I could pin the program to the taskbar and then close the app. And then when I'm ready to go open it, I can just start it right from the taskbar and there's my recent documents and it opens right up in the application. So again, uh, this is all functionality that I get for free with Windows 7. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the code. Now, I've already added some code to the onStartup method in app.xaml.cs. I just need to set a Boolean flag that I've added to control whether the jump list code executes or not. So you'll find the jump list functionality in the system.windows.shell namespace. So first, I'm going to create a new jump list. And note that I can also set its show recent category property. And you could use this if you wanted to disable the uh, default behavior that I mentioned earlier. So there are two types of items that can be added to a jump list, jump paths and jump tasks. Now jump paths are paths to documents that can be opened by the application. For instance, the docs that show up in recent history. Jump tasks are processes that can be invoked from the menu. You can think of a task as starting an executable, and the executable doesn't have to be the application itself, although it could be. For instance, I've decided here that Sometimes you just really want IntelliSense, and so you might want to open your code in Visual Studio. So I've added a jump task that points to Visual Studio 2008. Notice that I've got the path to Visual Studio, I've got a title, I've got a description, and I've even got the location of the icon for looks. Now once the jump task is ready, I can then add it to my jump list by using the jumpitems.add method. Now, there are times when you try to add items to a jump list, but it doesn't work. The most common scenario is if you try to manually add a jump path to a file type that isn't registered. Uh, you can actually get notifications when you get such a failure. All you have to do is create a handler for the jump items rejected event. I've done that here, although I don't expect to see any problems. At this point, my jump list is created and it's in memory, but it won't show up until I call the static set jump list method. You can have multiple jump list objects in memory, but only one can be associated with the app at any given time. Now the jump task as I've currently configured it only opens in Visual Studio, but it doesn't open a specific document and that's really what we want. So I'm going to switch over to the main code behind file where I've got a method called update jump list. Here I just loop through all the jump items in the current jump list and check for one that is a jump task and has a title of open in Visual Studio. Once I find it, I just update the arguments property to reflect the correct file path. And it's very important that I call the jump list apply method because if I don't do it, then my change is not going to get saved. Okay, let's see what this code does. So first I'm gonna build the uh, solution and then this time I'm gonna start the application from the taskbar icon, which should pick up the version uh, that has the changes I made. Now let's say I have some code and I decide I need the features of a real IDE. I right click to get the jump list and then I can select open in Visual Studio from the jump list and sure enough, there's my code open in Visual Studio. Before I wrap up, I wanna highlight a few things that might cause you issues when you start working with jump lists. First, in order for you to get recent items in the jump list, you have to select the start menu option, 
store and display recently opened items in the start menu and taskbar. Now it's selected by default, but you might check it if you don't see recent items. Another culprit could be the file associations. Uh, the easiest way to fix file associations is to right click a document and select open with and then choose your application. Again, your application doesn't have to be the default, it just has to be in the list or else uh, Windows 7 will not associate recent documents. Finally, when you're debugging with Visual Studio, the default behavior of Visual Studio is to use the Visual Studio hosting process. And the problem with that is your application executable name is going to include vshost.exe instead of just exe. So if you look here in my uh, debug folder, you, you, know, you can see that I've got two versions of the application and the, the, the hosting version call, is called vshost.exe. Uh, that can cause issues with jump lists when the application doesn't match. So the way to fix that is to go to your project properties, go to the debug tab, and then clear the selection that says enable the Visual Studio hosting process. So that's it for Windows 7 jump lists. Keep in mind that the .NET library you're using here is simply a managed wrapper around native calls. So all of this is supported in native C++ as well.